Mike? Yes. Feed me. <coughs> I'm hungry, okay? Don't you have food in this goddamn place? But I have to make it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess, okay. But I have to make it. Oh, yeah, you don't have any, like, you know, random snacks around, do you, around here, do you? No, I don't. And I don't have pretentious food for this week. But it's okay. Oh, we don't, we don't I know, I know, I know. Um, but speaking of that, yeah. welcome to the As Yet Undecided podcast. With your hungry, hungry hosts. Not hippos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, actually, I'll just see what's in my bag because there's always a few surprises. There's <laughs> surprise food in a bag. I don't know what to think of that, really. No, there isn't. It's just chocolate. This is just chocolate. Yeah. And you're asking about being hungry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Sophie, get it together. You have food. Yeah, well, I don't want. I don't want any more chocolate. Though. I just had some dark chocolate. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, are you sure our marks are up? No. No, tell tell the audience what I'm doing. Mike's checking his marks. No, I'm not. What am I doing? Oh, you're just checking your timetable. Yes. ADHD opportunity. Okay. University might have ended for now, but it's going to start up again soon. Yes. Text uh, version? Yeah, text version. Yeah. So, no nudes. So sad. No nudes. So, my Monday. time. Monday. Monday, I start at eight o'clock in the morning. <sighs> okay, let me break it down. This, break this down for you. <laughs> Mike, it's going to start on Monday at eight o'clock in the morning. His class ends at nine. And he has nothing else all day. On Wednesday, he has applied issues in cultural and social psychology as of 11 a.m. And then, straight afterwards, he has social institutions. On Thursday, he has work at integrated learning at 10 o'clock. And at 2 o'clock, he has um, international relations. Yes. On Friday, he has um, international relations as of 10 o'clock in the morning and nothing else. So that'll be the tutorial, wouldn't it? I believe so. Yeah, that'll be. Uh, don't you just... Don't you just hate that? 8 o'clock in the morning class. Why did you choose that? One hour class. Why? One hour class. Monday morning. Why? Don't know. You're an idiot. I don't make the timetable. Who? My paper administrator does. Why? Because... <laughs> because you just... Like, because... Like, like, at, the, at the end of the... Like, like, we pick our papers. We don't pick our timetables. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that's how it goes. So like, I like, feel so sorry for you, Mike. Uh, it's it's just the whole fact that it is, l- like, I can handle an eight o'clock class. Yeah. If there are more classes after that. I know. It's just like, what would happen, Sophie? Yeah. What would happen if you had a one-hour class on one day and have no classes for the rest of the day? I mean, like, what's the point? Yeah. Exactly. Especially when it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Thank you. So, um, I think you'd better start practicing polycyclic sleep then. Yes. As in, go to sleep, wake up Monday morning, go to class, finish class, come back home, go to bed and go back to sleep. Yes. So, um, that actually drives into what I do most Mondays. Yeah. Very well. Which is? Therapy. Group therapy. No. Individual therapy because my inter- individual therapy session. Yeah. Is at nine o'clock. Oh really? Yes. So you go to class, you go to therapy, you come back home, you sleep it off. Yes. You sleep off the tears. I sleep off the tears. Tears for fears. Everybody <laughs> wants to copyright this material. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. But I'm saying that. Um. How well, is group therapy so far for you? No, no, it's not group therapy. No, sorry, individual therapy. How is that going for you so far? Um, it's well, well, because well, we had the intense bit. Yeah. For a long while. Yeah. Um, and, and we stopped that because it was just getting too intense for myself. So intense. Yeah, it was just so intense that um, and Sophie knows firsthand. Yeah. That I started getting really anxious. Much psychology. 
Yes. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is a serious topic. Why am I making such lightheartedness out of this? Um, so, you know, um, but I figured out um, what, what, what anxious for me looks like and feels like. What does it look like for you? Um, like, there is a space between the physical and the mental self. Oh, yeah? There is a physical gap that, um, I'm not sure if you've, uh, if you've actually let this happen. Is that, you know, when you run really, really fast, mm -hmm. but your body's in front and you, you know, the, you know, your, your mental calculations are behind you. Oh, yeah? That's what it feels like. Oh, wow. So take about an inch between my physical and my mental image. So are you 2.5 centimetres behind you or in front of you? Behind. Right, so it must feel quite freaky for you to see your body walk away from you. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It feels really freaky. So what happens if you want to move? Like, I want to move my arm up. So, like, my arm moves up before I tell my arm to move up. Holy moly. It's like reverse puppetry, isn't it? Yeah, it is reverse puppetry, but but it's the whole fact that Mike. Yeah. You know there is only one arm going up. Yes, I know that. <laughs> yeah. But but like that's that's this is my intention. Yeah, this is what this is this is the best way that I can express that. Anyway, are you in your body right now? Sophie just tapped my stomach with her foot. Yes, I am here. Um, m m my my physical and mental image are uh, exactly right here, right now. Kajito ergo sum. What? Kajito ergo sum. I do not know what that means. I think, and therefore, I am. Oh, I I thought you were doing some sort of pagan ritual. Kind of is. Or or a Harry Potter spell. Well, it's a pagan ritual <laughs> to get your body, to get your mind inside of your body again. Kajito ergo sum. I thought you were doing a mathematical equation. No. <laughs> anyway, pretentious food corner. Yes. Whitaker's eighty-two, no, seventy-six percent dark Ghana chocolate. Dark Ghana's. Yeah. Let's see how this goes compared to your regular chocolate. Where is the ingredient, Sophie? I don't have it with me. <laughs> But you can Google it if you want. How does it compare to the regular chocolates? I, I would consider this to be what your stuffed animal feels like. I consider this the taste of my humour. Very rich. Dark. <laughs> Pretentious. Dry. <laughs> Crumbly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you describe your humour? Um. Well, I have I have two types of jokes. Oh yeah. The really funny stuff mm -hmm. is experienced. Right. Right. And I, and I take these experiences and I portray it in a joke. Mm -hmm. um, and and those, are the, uh, those are the types of jokes that people enjoy. Mm. And then there are the jokes that I come up with myself. And they are beyond horrible. Such as? Um, mince and cheese hip pies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, your jokes are not always that bad. Yes. Like... I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story that I went over for dinner mm. last Monday night, mm. um, and my cousin's auntie and uncle, non-related, mm. have another flatmate per se, mm. and their nephew, who is sixteen, yeah, is just moved from the mouldy side of Auckland into the city. The white side. No, well, well, the Mouldy side, a.k.a. outside of Auckland, mm -hmm. but still part of Auckland. Yeah. Um, into, the, into the city. The white 
outside. So, mm. you, you know, he's talking about finding a job and going to school and mm. playing sport. Yeah. And all that sort of jazz. And he has the innate ability to pronunciate words badly to the point where it becomes humorous. Oh, really? Yes. Such as Fong Don't and... Like, like he confused Puff Daddy with P Money. What? What's, what's a Puff Daddy? What's a Puff Daddy? Puff Daddy is the rapper that was born in New York mm. back in the 80s, and P Money is a New Zealand DJ. <laughs> so he and he pronounced the specific word. Yeah. Hori culture. Wait, what? Yes. Now, can you guess, Sophie, what topic he was actually trying to say? Horticulture. Horticulture. Yes. So, I see, like a spoon. Have you heard of um, Dr. Spooner of Oxford University? No. Have you heard of something called Spoonerisms? No. This is where you get two words in a phrase, and you and you mix up the first letters of those two words. So, for example, um, pea soup. Becomes um, <coughs> pizza. No, pea soup becomes becomes sea poop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But in saying that, yeah, he he did this mm. without doing a spoonerism. We generally you do a spoonerism deliberately. No, the spoonerism for him for Doctor Spooner it wasn't deliberate. It was just how his brain worked. Yeah, yeah. And for that instance, it was how his brain, brain worked. Works. And that's how what it came up with, and like we were just like, what, <laughs> what? In between, so you're saying what in between your laughters? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, horticulture. <laughs> horticulture. What the hell is horticulture? Are we talking about hydroponics? <laughs> are we talking about growing weed here? Or are we talking about the hush hush? Yes. Are we, or are we talking about the ladies of the evening? Ladies of the North White. Well, you know, or the moon, or the moonlit beauties. Are we talking about this? The January, February, March girls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or. Or or, pe- or the or the play or the or the what or the rabbits that do love to play. Or the women that like to live on the top floors of buildings. Or the, rec- or the recreational um, companions. Um, the recreational companions. That's a good one. Really? Say <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, but nevertheless, yeah. um, y- y- you know, him saying those things, and we were just like cracking up, laughing, we just going, yeah. what? Well, that would be an example of a good joke that I would say. Nice. So, um, what's he studying? Horticulture? No, but because he's 16. Mm. He's... Because he's still going to secondary school. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know exactly what he's going. You can study horticulture in secondary school. Yeah, yeah, but but, but as always, that's only in some institutions. True. Because hey, for me, I never got that right. I couldn't even take economics. No. <laughs> Do you want it to? I did. I wanted to take economics. Why don't you take economics at uni then? Well, I did. That's how I got my diploma in science. Oh, how did it continue with it? Um, but that's the reason why I cho- chose sociology. I see. So you prefer the human side of economics rather than the money side? Yes. I'm doing economics still. For the money. Money, money, <laughs> money. <laughs> that's what I'm also taking on a law degree. I, you know, law and economics. It's all about the moolah, mate. Yeah, it's all about how much you charge an hour. Yeah, I'm back in green. Back in green. Yes. But in saying that, yeah. um, I, I have a secret surprise. Which is? For Sophie. Which is? Um, why are we doing podcasts today, Sophie? What else is happening today? Bluestone Room? Yes. Please explain Bluestone Room to the, to the audience. That's our favourite pub. And we do pub cuisine in there. It's an old, it used to be an old waterhouse, pump house, I believe, for the central city, and it had a well in it. Yes. It still has a well in it still. 
and uh, this used to be the old grindstone mill, so they used to create flour in there. Yes. So what if I told you yeah. that there may be another person? Apart from Ernestine? Yes. And her friend? Correct. Who? Um, he is a school teacher yeah. at Westlake Boys. Cool. So. A fellow hostel? Yes. How old is he? He is in his 30s. Oh, yeah. So, what do you think of that? That's going to be interesting. I'd love to meet him. Good. You may meet him in 45 minutes. Isn't he coming down with us? He is coming down with us. Cool. We'll be leaving here in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, after the quiz night that I did yeah. at the hostel, yes. he was impressed with my knowledge. Any one of the how many how many lessons of scrambles worth more than three points? Yes. And there were exactly ten. That makes me a No <laughs> Okay. Uh, hey Mike, um, do you think my friends are too old for me? Um what is the median age of your friends? That's a good question. They range from like nineteen to you. Nineteen to me. Yeah. Um and what about their intelligence intelligence levels, so You know personally, Mike. I know. You know personally. I know personally. Yes. But but the you know the, the intelligence the intelligence ranges from above a hundred. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Okay. That so that makes me your oldest and most intellectual friend. Yes. Which makes me wonder, um, am I actually smart enough for you? Are you going down too low when it comes to friends when you actually get to me? Because Dad and I was ta- were talking about that the, um, the other night. Like how, like, how are you supposed to make good friends and how friends are supposed to uplift you and you're not supposed to make friends that are beneath you. But I'm like, how can you have friends who are above you without them making friends who are beneath you? Like, surely you can't have it both ways. That's right. That's right. You can't have it both ways, and and this there, there is a. So, no, it's not. It's not that you can't have it both ways. You have to have it both ways. Yeah. In order for you to have friends who are above you, you also need to have friends who are below you. That's how the world works. That's how it balances out. Yes. Um. It is. And if I say this. Yeah. You're gonna go. Oh wow. Yeah. You your personality is the is the mean of all of your friends put together. You told me that a few times, and it's the truth. Yes. Yeah. Just to reaffirm what I've been saying. But that's the thing, though. How come I'm such an optimistic person, and it's like I have such pessimistic friends? This doesn't make sense. Um, probably because for me, um, I see a lot of my old self in you. Right. Oh crap. Be before the the showers of pessimism. Mike, I'm doomed. <laughs> but as a friend, as as your loyal servant, yeah, it it is my job to try and keep you as optimistic as possible. Thank you very much. Without you getting hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be a bit optimistic for you know. It's yeah. it's great to be hopeful. So, living from the day to day. Yes. Yeah. So so that's well that's well I have many goals. Yeah. As your friend. Thank you. And talking about dad he, that he's put additional goals. Yeah. That, like I'm supposed to make friends from above me like dad it, it doesn't work it doesn't work one way you have to have it both ways. Yeah. Yeah otherwise it's just unfair. Yes. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just funny. That, that was just funny. Awkward silence. Yeah. Followed by that. Yeah. But, ne- but never mind. Um, because... Yeah. Because of my personality, I can make friends with anybody. Yeah, me too. Um, from... Me. We'll go with you. Who is like a younger version of Mike. To, to, to people who are in their 60s and, uh, and late 50s. And getting a bit senile. I wouldn't say senile, but um, yeah, it's it's very easy because of the way that I construct myself. 
Yeah. Um, which we have talked about in the podcast. Oh, yeah. About how I create friendships. Yep. Um, and, and I hope that people like yourself and other people mm-hmm. um, acknowledge the way that I interact with people and sort of get their own take yeah. on how to take on these sort of situations. Thank you. Um, and for you, I know what your job is is for me. I've I've noticed what what I need and I've left you and to get yourself more confidence. I, I would see you as a hype woman. Yeah <laughs> The ultimate cheerleader, the hype woman, yeah. Or yeah. um yeah. <laughs> what, what is it called? Um Oh, what is it called? Um that, uh, no, no. There, there's another term for a hype, hype person. Cheerleader. No, 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 no. It's, it's more in a bar sense. Wing. Wing. Yeah, you are a wing woman. Yeah, I am the ultimate wing woman. Yes. So you're trying to glorify me. Yeah. So the other person. Will glorify you too. In other ways. Yeah. Yes. Do you seek glory? <sighs> No, I, I'm going to say no. Except, um, why would you have a wing woman then? If you do not seek glory, <sighs> why would you have a wing woman? It's like, why do you need a wing woman in the first place? Oh, I know why. Yeah, 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 you know why. But I'm like... You don't realise that you need it. You, yeah. re- you need it, but you don't realise that, no, you, don't realize that you need it. But it does, yeah, yeah. You need it. Yeah. I, I already I already answered my own question. So, like, why why go into a bar to talk to women yeah. when I need someone else to do it when I can't do it myself? It's because I can't do it by myself. You need me. Yes. And in, in, in an actual fact, mm. here's a question. Yeah. Is it better? I Because I think it is better, but I want to hear your take on it. Mm. Is it better... To have a wing of the opposite sex or the same sex. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely hope the podcast microphone did not get <laughs> Do you think it, do you think about that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just got maybe got the sh- <laughs> But saying that, I, I I know this is a tough question. Oh. Especially since I have so little experience in the dating arena. I yes. have never dated before. But theoretically, mm-hmm. we're talking about theories here. Theoretically, I would say same sex because having a different sex kind of can can misconstrued it as you have already been taken. Okay. So, so uh, okay. As I said, I have no idea. I'm just guessing here because... I am a dummy when it comes to love. Okay, okay. Let's uh, okay. Let, okay, let's post a scenario. Okay. For example, if I wanted to woo a woman, let's place Ernestine here, or whichever generic woman fear. Well, do you want something that's white and blonde? I I want to see someone that was that is off white. Off white. <laughs> yeah. Wait, didn't your father say that white is right? Yeah, the, no, white way is the right way. <laughs> the white way is the right way. <laughs> okay, he definitely won't approve of me. Yes. So, in saying that. Oh, yeah, your mother's so white, your father married her. Thanks. It's, it's the truth, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my sense of humour is just really, really dry. Off white person. Ernestine. Whatever. Um, I mean, it's easy to imagine Ernestine because I've seen her a few times, so I can just imagine her sitting on the bed right off now. Off-white. Off-white, okay. Okay. She's Samoan, by the way. Or is it, oh, she's Tongan. New Wayan. She's New Wayan, crap. Okay. I'm being racist, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Yes, so. so anyway, there's New Wayan, so, new old woman. Yes. Ernestine. So. Yeah. W- would it be easier mm-hmm. to have a man... Yeah. Talk to her as a wing man, or would it be easier for a woman to as a wing woman to talk to her? Right, I see. But how am I supposed to go about it? Like, hey, Ernestine, 
Mike thinks you're hot. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah? I, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah? You are actually surprisingly good at this Why? without actually realising it. Why you you it? have done this to me before. Really? Yes. How? You remember that fancy smancy dinner, that, that, that presentation that you told me to go to? Yeah. And you introduced me to all of your professors? Yeah. That's pretty much what you do. Introducing people? Yes. And hyping you up? Yes. What do you mean I'm surprisingly good at this? Because you've done it. Holy moly, do I have a natural talent for this by mistake? Yeah, because, like, let's, let's talk to this person, let's talk to this person. Yeah, so let's talk to this person. And we managed to strike out the conversation with um, my American professor. Yes, because we just talked about generic. Guy. We just talked about generic stuff. Yeah. Because, hey, if we're talking about generic stuff, that's what I can do. Yeah. So, um, do you actually want to look for love rights at this moment? Well, well, let's just say I am mildly looking. So you are interested. Now, okay, okay. But I, you don't want you don't you don't you're not actively seeking out for it. But if it just happens, if the chance ha just so happens to fall in your lap, you won't drive it away. Yes. Let's just say. Um, you're setting out a passive bait. Yes. A, a passive net. Yes. Yes. I I'm sending out a passive fan. Yeah. <laughs> a passive, fan. A, a passive calling. Yeah, it was like, you're just putting out a sign saying, Mike is this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, because what I've noticed mm -hmm. is that um, if you are being too obvious yeah. and too out there, there is a chance of desperation. Oh, yes. Despacito. <laughs> Yes, I just can't wait for Despacito 2. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. yes, that, that, that's usually my take on that sort of thing. I see. You don't want to seem too desperate. Otherwise, you seem weak and pathetic and therefore undateable. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the logic. Yay. <laughs> of love. Um, I'm not about to date until I'm 25. Really? No. Apparently, apparently I'm just too emotionally immature. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. You agree with that, though? Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and besides, it's like, um... Right and now, it's not your fault. But <laughs> it's, it's not my fault. Oh, yeah. I had a crappy, I had a crappy five years of my childhood, which means I'll be written off, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, because... Yeah. yeah. That sort of optimism comes with a lot of naivety. Yeah. <laughs> So, 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 every time you walk, you, so every time you were walking, you had a little shelter behind you. Who? You had a little shelter. Whose shelter? Any just random shelter, because if it was decided to rain on you, the, site, the shelter was there. Oh, true. I've always had shelter, yeah. Yeah. So or, or a gazebo, or a blunt umbrella. Or, or a blunt umbrella, yep. Yeah. Yes, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um... So I'm too emotionally sheltered to date properly. Yes, because what what one of my friends yeah and and the, they won't tell you directly, but I am. Mm. You're twelve. Emotionally twelve. Yes. That makes a whole lot of sense. Yes. Wait. That's why. Fifteen. I, I'm more emotionally fifteen though. Yeah, well, yeah. Remember to always mine us off five years because I lost five years. Yes. I'm emotionally 15. It's, mm. a, it's a fair call. Mm. Because I'm actually am. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm actually am. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the podcast here. I'm the, the, sorry. This is not mediation or me, <laughs> me, mediation or medication or <laughs> meditation. Um. Um. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a being a little honest trailer boy. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Um, mm. Just tell them to correct them to 15, because yeah. it's five years. Yes. So that's why I'm not allowed to date, because I'm technically more 15 than 22. Mm. Which is actually really annoying, but, you know, it just so happens. Mm. Which is why I'm not allowed to date until I'm 25, because that makes me more 20, as I would have been more, more emotionally mature by then. Hopefully. Hopefully. Here's to hoping. Fingers crossed. Finger crossed. Because, honestly... Toes crossed. Toes crossed. Because, let me tell you, it's... um. It's a lonely, lonely, lonely life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I. I think. 
the Lonely Planet books are, are kind of an oxymoron, really. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, what'd you look for in a woman? What do I look for in a woman? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What should I look for in a man? Uh, it, it is entirely up to you what, <laughs> what parameters that you set. Help me here. Well, at least I should look for kindness, right? Yeah, but you, someone who won't take a someone who won't take advantage of me. That would be nice. Yeah, it, that's like number one. Like, do please not take advantage of me. This is just crap. Yeah, otherwise, you're just a bad person. Um, I th- I'm, I'm apparently too nice for this world sometimes. I think yeah. in, in your scenario, mm-hmm. I would stay away from baggage. 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 As in, um, either. Um, either spawns or ex-wives or along those lines. So don't date someone who's already has children, who already have children. Or has been in a marriage. How about ex-girlfriends? Ex-girlfriends are fine. Because it's handbag luggage. Yes. So, so anything. That's yeah. Okay. The, 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 this is actually a better connotation for you. Yeah. Anyone that has had legal papers fi- uh, filed. Yeah. Stay away from them. Because that's carry on luggage. Yes. You can get. You can date someone with. No, wait. Not carry on. No, you can date someone with carry on luggage, but if they have to check in, don't date them. Yes. So like. Yeah. Um, marriage, kids, bankruptcy. See. Mortgages. Uh, mortgages. Um, criminal record. <laughs> How about traffic fines? Yeah, papers have been filed. You can file papers for traffic fines. Yeah, well, well, well exactly. So you, you can say that that person is a rebellious driver. <laughs> so basically, they shouldn't have gone to jail before. They shouldn't have ex wives. They shouldn't have kids. They shouldn't have any legal luggage, you mean? Yes, legal legal paperwork luggage. How about emotional luggage? Emotional luggage is tricky. Yeah, but, because it's you. I know, but you don't want to date me, do you? No, I don't. You're too old. Yeah, I'm too old and I'm too frail. And you're my bro. This yeah. incest. I'm really against incest. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, against if, even though yeah. I have had to have this conversation with a lot more people than you realise yeah. about our relationship that yeah I, I've had I understand I completely I totally understand it's, totally, it's easy to see that we're in a romantic relationship but seriously we're not doing no. it we're not no, no. B- b- because because yeah. because the, the way that I work yeah. is, is that we need well i'm very big on communication yeah huge on communication sure. but because when you have when, when when you have the right communication channels yes and you are both on same page mm. you can thrive on a relationship yes but be, it, like because that we have already had these conversations previously mm. um it makes both parties understand each other very well so emotional luggage. Should I should I avoid emotional luggage? Emotional. Um, okay. It mm. it it is tricky because there are people yeah. like me um, that have had that emotional baggage and, and are currently working on it. Yeah. Um, and a person like you, yeah, for example, would be too nice given in that sort of situation. Too nice. So, you, so they need some tough love. Yes. Okay. So avoid emotional luggage because I'm too nice for them. But, and also in the same point. Yeah. Um, I would put the same weight on emotional baggage due to all means, including um, drug Yes. So avoid people with addictions because I'm too nice. Yes. Avoid people with depression because I'm too nice. Well, well you be their friend, be but their not friend. Be, not be romantic about it. Right. 
You're actually reducing the my potential partners by a lot. Yeah, I know. But I suppose uh, mum boasted that whoever gets me will be very, very lucky. So I suppose top quality stock which deserves top quality stock, right? Yes. Yeah, so... Yes, uh, yeah, let's say that. Um, so, um, as, you, as my friend, you'll want someone who's perfect for me. So, no emotional motivation. No, 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 now, now, perfect is a very Free. rough term. But you want someone who's of high enough quality. Yes. So, no emotional luggage. Yes. They have to be nice, and they, and they can't be leeches, so they have to be, um, uh, they have to, like, not take advantage of me. Uh, they also have to be intelligent enough, I suppose. Yes. Mike, that's really difficult. Hey, hey. Wow. You, you can say the same thing to me. That's why I I clearly state that I never got with anyone back home. Except for this girl who had two kids. Adopted? No, 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 no. No, 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 yeah. I, no, no, no. I mean, in, in, in Taranaki. In Taranaki. Where I grew up, I didn't hook up with anybody. Anyone. anyone. Okay. Purely because of that fact. Because they are not good enough for you. No, because they couldn't match me on an intellectual basis. Yeah. Right. So, I know this sounds a bit of an awkward question for you, Mike, but would you date someone who is like me, but older? Like, more your age? Now... No, like I said, we would have to. Uh, they, they, would, they, they would have. To. They, we, not us. Me, they. me, and the fictional off-white person. Off-white person, okay. Whoever it is, yes, would need to have that communication first. Right. So, what do you look for? As I said, someone who's open. Yeah. So, so, um, I have always. With all of my acquaintances, yeah. friends, whatever, I have always opened that channel. Yes. Because I think that you need... Okay, I do not believe in the whole one night whatever's, right? Well, you know, have you heard about the nerd who bought a one night stand? No. Well, apparently it wasn't enough space for all his books. <laughs> no. Yeah. So no. What? Sophie, no. Okay. Okay, no. Okay. So, the fictional off-white person. Fictional off-white person. Wait, why would you date white people? No, no, I'm saying that's the colour of the wall. That's, oh! <laughs> that's why I said off-white at the beginning. By the way, Mike's wall is cream. <laughs> the cream person and... Okay. No, the wall. The wall. The mirror. The mirror. Yeah, the mirror. The mirror. Okay, so what are you looking for in a date? Now... Uh, the, the, the mirror. We're talking to the mirror here. Or the dream catcher. The dream catcher is more towards our line of sight. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of the all? Yes. Who's <laughs> the most statist of the all? So, I have to be their acquaintance and have communication channels open. Okay. Even before starting that, that, that conversation. So you want to be acquaintance with them first, but not necessarily friends. Uh, but we're even friends for that matter, but we ha but you need to have those conversations in mind. Of course. So, and you can tell if a friend is being a friend. Yeah. If they are polite about it. Yeah. Like, you're a great guy, Mike, but you're not my type. Correct. So those are the types of people that I trust more. Yeah. As a friend. Yeah. Than a friend that I never had the conversation with. Ooh, because you never quite know what their intentions are. Yes. Ain't you probably never ever lost one friend because of the conversation, right? And she's a bitch. Good memory, though. Yeah. Good memory. I have to have a good memory. So I've, I've only had that one instance. Yeah, and she's a bitch, so... Uh, but, bitch, you mean you may as well lose her. Well, let's just say, in all defence, it was unreasonable. Why is that? No, no, I mean, like, her reaction was unreasonable. Totally. I'm, uh, I'm not going to say swear words and, 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 well, and all I'm saying is that I'm very glad you lost her mm. because she doesn't sound like a good friend yes 
Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? It's only Why because can't we be friends. <laughs> now we're gonna get copy straight. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, it, and um, and let's just say that it'll be on a y equals x squared basis. Uh. So it'll be very slow up to the point of 1. Be- That's because be because because you need to, you need to set those sort of you know say for instance if they were yeah you have to put the communication bar you would have to put the parameters in place yeah to see how much you progress through the relationship see which barriers they jump over yes and it, checkpoints they go through yes and which ones that they don't okay yes. so what else are looking for in a woman um. Now, since since I did the whole criterion mm-hmm. for you, yeah, what is your criterion for me? What, what what do you think a a cream person or a mirrored person okay. should be? Well, since you've known me for two years, happy friend anniversary, by the way. Yay! <laughs> uh, okay, so she. Okay, personally, I'll say that she better have very little to zero emotional luggage herself. Mm. Because you have a lot, okay? Yes. You can't... Having two people in a relationship having emotional luggage is just going to break down eventually. It's very, it makes it very hard for it to work. Mm. No offense, sorry guys. Um, maybe maybe an interest in psychology as well. Mm. She's sharing your interest. She also has to be very smart. In fact, let's just say it's the same criteria for me as for you. <laughs> okay. Crap. You know, she has to be kind, and she has to, you know, not take advantage of you. She also has to be understanding and not a gold digger. She also has to understand that money does not equal worth. That will be helpful. Yes. And she, you know, has to understand that you like helping people and you don't want to make a whole lot of money in your life. That's important. Yes. You don't want a gold digger. Anything else? Oh. You better make sure that she's not going to entrap you with a kid or something. Entrap me. Entrap you, the kid, yeah. The, the, this podcast is brought to you by the 2002 movie Entrapment, starring Sean Connery and Catherine Zeta Jones. Are you serious? <laughs> Not on Netflix New Zealand currently. <laughs> Netflix New Zealand is pathetic. But anyway, um, I'll say that the criteria is set for me, which is, by the way, very high. You should also be set for yourself. Yes. With the added bonus of make sure that he or she is not a gold digger. Yes. And then I have to say, yeah. if there was a 19-year-old version of myself, yeah. would you date them? Uh, how about 21? <laughs> okay, 21. Yeah. 2007 me. <laughs> what were you like back in 2007? Oh, God. Um... I could still get drunk and still make it to my part-time job on time. Were you, were you as interesting now, back then as now? <sighs> What's more your thoughts on life? Were you, were you an optimist? Yes, I was, but I did not know as much as I knew now. Okay. I had, I had a lot of assumptions. Yeah, like me. But they weren't validated by academic research I did not realise the academic research that was there yeah. to um, approve that my assumptions were correct uh, crap. I'm not too sure I mean we are, he'll be on, I mean, your younger self will be on the radar but, but it's that um, okay you know I'm asexual slash demisexual I'll probably take a few years for me to get that to know that guy mm. before I consider dating him. So, what do you think about the shoes on on the other foot, huh? What? Huh? Hey. Eh? You asked me that question, and then it was me asking you that, that same question. That was actually an interesting <laughs> question. Well, Mike, it's, to be fair, that was actually an interesting question. It's something I'll actually consider because you know it's mm. your younger self would be on my radar, but mm. I wouldn't date that person for a good few years. Yes. 
Is that, good? is that a fair answer? That is a fair answer. Just as you won't really date me. So in saying that, yeah. we should end the podcast there. Sophie, would you like to say what our personal details are? Okay, if you want to date Mike. <laughs> no, seriously, he's totally dateable, okay? I'm saying it as, as his wing woman. He's totally single, as a Pringle, and he's a big soft marshmallow looking for some loving, okay? He's got gigantic love handles, come on. <laughs> what? Carry on. What? Carry Why are you on. laughing? It's the truth. Carry on. Carry on with the handles. He he made me he made me contact it on at <laughs> the minus T H E M A R N U S. Oh, oh by the way, I'm not about to date for another five years, so make that four years actually, and my birthday's in September, so I'll be turning twenty one then. Um I'll be at um, Sophie 9709 except for Russian Sophie apparently oh by the way Russian Sophie is also not very dateable she has an Asian boyfriend who cares and if you want to um, contact us both for dating details <laughs> we can be found at um, as you undecided podcast at gmail.com or, or at AYU podcast at AYU podcast have a nice day ladies and gentlemen and may you be lucky in love not from Russia with love. Oh, oh! Do find a Russian bride. No! Come on, find a Russian bride. They're they're fun. <laughs>